Hi, in this video we will go through how to analyze Excel data in MATLAB. The other day I presented in a workshop how to analyze Excel data in MATLAB. Prior to this workshop, I collected some survey data. So I'm going to use this survey data to walk you through some introductory things of how to analyze data from an Excel file in MATLAB. Let's first get started with the new script file. So I'm going to start my script file with CLC, clear, and I can do close all or not do close all depending if I'm going to have pop-up windows or plotting going on. If I am going to, I should use close all. If I'm not, then it really doesn't matter. The first, the first real lines of code that I'm going to get into is actually importing in the Excel file data. So the first thing I need to do is say read cell, and this is a function I'm going to use to import all of the data from Excel to my variable that I've made. Instead of read cell, I can also use XLS read. This is an older version of the function and I prefer not to use it. If you do want to import in your Excel file as numbers only, there is an option to do that with XLS read. So that is something to think about if you're trying to import in only matrices from your data. One of the other big reasons I don't like using XLS read over read cell is I like to switch between a Mac and a Windows computer. So yes, XLS read will work both on my Mac and on my Windows computer, but there's a XLS write and a write cell version and the XLS write will not work on my Mac and the write cell version will work on my Mac. So I like to be able to create programs both on my laptop and my computer and they are not operating system compatible, but I like to make sure that I'm using codes and functions that I know work both on my Mac and on my Windows. From here on, it's very important to realize that every step I'm taking is dependent upon the context of what I'm trying to do and what my data looks like. The first step I'm going to do in manipulating my data is slicing that title out. I want to isolate this and I want it to be stored somewhere so I have my title and I want to delete the title off of my data set because I don't want to be analyzing my data and accidentally analyzing parts of my title in my data analysis. Obviously, again, this is dependent upon your context. Do you have a title? Is it one row? Is it two rows? And what does that look like in your data? So from here, I might be tempted to just start right off with analysis, slicing out the data that I want and starting to analyze it. Now, if I do this, it's okay. I might come across some errors or I might have perfect data and I might not come across any errors. In my case, I'm showing an example of hitting an error of it's not able to analyze some of my data, and the reason is is because I have missing data. So if I have missing data, the first step I need to do is actually go in and clean my data and get rid of any of those missing data points and replacing them with empty, nothing, or words, or you can write something in, however you want to replace that, but you do need to replace that missing data with something. To go ahead and remove the missing cells, I'm going to look at my entire data set. So I don't want to just look at one area, I want to look at everything. So I'm going to do a nested for loop approach. My first for loop is to look at my rows and my second for loop is to look at my columns. So then I'm looking at every single cell one at a time and I'm saying, is there a missing data point here? If it's missing, then I'm replacing it with an empty character. So I'm using the characters because most of my data is all strings. If I was worried about numbers, then I'd be using brackets to represent an empty bracket spot. Now this does have other complications. So if I were to take all these list of numbers and I had brackets there, it wouldn't see that as a value. So then it would just kind of delete it out. If you come across this problem, let me know and be sure to comment and I'll give you advice and input on how to approach that as well. One other thing I would like to note about my for loops is I'm not hard coding them to say go from row 1 to row 500 or row 50 or however many rows I have. I'm saying size. The importance of using the size function instead is that I can now use this for loop setup for any size of data. So if I want to swap out my Excel file, all of a sudden I have new surveys come in and I want to analyze this new set of data, then I don't have to go in and change all these hard coded values. It's all based on the data set. So at this point, I'd have to make a decision. Do I want to consider the missing data as a data point or do I want to not include it? So for example, with prior experience, I'm going to not include it. So if it's empty, I'm just going to remove it and then I'm not going to include that in my count for survey participants. Now I can use this count with just people who gave me an answer, not including people who didn't respond to that particular question and then see how many said they had no experience in MATLAB. So the data we're talking about is related to a specific survey question where I asked people their prior MATLAB experience. They had a multiple answer option. So they could select one or a few different options on this list. Some of them included none or MATLAB as a calculator. 
or plotting or different options of MATLAB experience. So now I'm using those different options and I'm analyzing all the data to sort out how many people selected each of the different categories. So I have categorical data that I'm working with. From here, there's a lot of different options of how I can display my results. So I'm gonna choose a few different options. I'm gonna do a pie chart to show how many people have prior MATLAB experience or no prior MATLAB experience. And then I'm gonna use a bar chart to show how many people have the different types of MATLAB experience listed beyond just the none. To show some other options of what I can do with this data and how I can analyze it, I'm gonna go through and do a quick analysis with a little sneak peek of analyzing this text and different things I can do with analyzing the text and displaying it. If you wanna dive into that example further, I recommend checking out my other video about using MATLAB to analyze open-ended responses to surveys. If you're looking for more information about plotting, I recommend watching my plotting series. As always, thank you for watching and I look forward to your comments and I'm always happy to help.